Yeah. So this is the setup. It's a pretty simple setup, and but this simple setup can be used to um, you know walk through some of the conceptual issues, conceptual topics in electrostatics, and also just uh, you know applying some of the formulas that were derived that you should know how to use. And I will tell you this setup is important for another reason. So as I uh, confessed the last time, there aren't many electrostatics demos I have. Um, it's partly because a lot of the things we learn in electrostatics are kind of, they're a bit too abstract. Um, so you don't see them in real physical objects that much. But this particular arrangement is an arrangement we call capacitor. That's why I called it parallel play capacitor. And in fact, uh, I have a picture of what the capacitor looks like. So this is, uh, so this is, um, you know, the picture here is the picture that I drew on the board, more or less. Oops, with terminals flipped around. Um, now, you know, real capacitors are not made this way. Real capacitors are made with these two plates rolled into each other, so that, um, so that you know, it's uh, compact in form. And so that as you are rolling it, they don't touch each other. Um, they, so, that, um, so, so there's an insulator between them to make sure that they don't touch each other. So there are some pictures of capacitors here. Um, and let me just pass this around. This is a collection of uh, reasonably large capacitance. Um, you know, it's physically pretty big, right? So, so that's what capacitors look like. It's a um, circuit component. Um, so but today we are just treating it as an electrostatic thing, and this is the idealized representation of a capacitor that we can use to derive some of the properties of it and um, just talk about capacitance based on what we know about electrostatics. But uh, this is like the first example of an actually, um, actu um, um, actually um, practical um, electrical object that you will see. If you're doing, it, if you're doing any, any kind of electrical engineering, then you'll be dealing with the capacitors all the time. So, um, so, yeah, so we went through much of the setup already, just to, before I mentioned the word capacitor beyond writing it down. We already went through a lot of this already. But uh, let me, let's wrap up this discussion by giving a definition of capacitance. So, um, so this is the term I want to define as a new term, but it, involving the old concepts that we, you guys already know. So, we want to define something called capacitance. Um, so these devices, so you know, I mean, you don't really have to go through this, but this is how I li like to remember things so that I don't forget. Um, it helps me remember what capacitance is. If I remember, if I have some sense of feeling for what this device is for, like what the purpose of this particular arrangement is. Any guesses, uh, like uh, if you were to, you know, build this device, like why would you be building it? What do you think the purpose of building this device would be? Um, Kevin, you're saying something. Just to control a non-voltage. Control, oh I see, you're thinking about in an elect actual electric circuit. They use this to smooth out the ripples in a inverter, okay. So that, a little bit too advanced. We are thinking about just the, just the basic electrostatic quantities. I heard some other, Pedro, were you saying something? Uh, maybe Miguel, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, you guys are all doing advanced circuit stuff. I don't mean that. <laughs> so, you know, let's say you just saw this device, just the basic fundamental electrostatics. You saw that you could apply voltage to it, and as a result of applying voltage, two different things happened. You established some electric field inside, and you put some charges on the plate. Any guesses which of those two things is uh, more of like what you might want to do as a, like with this device? 
Mm, yeah, I guess 50-50 chance. So you know, here I'm just trying to uh, have you guess intuitively. So one of the effect is that yes, there's an electric field here, and de it depends on the specific device you're building. Sometimes you will be building this device for the actual electric field inside. But when you especially think of this picture, you see that oh, I'm not never going to get to the electric field because it's filled with the insulator. I'm never really going to measure anything there. So once you get to this picture of the device, what you are realizing is that what this device is for is for storing charges on the plate. So the purpose of a capacitor is to store charges. That's, I mean, that's a, at a very basic sense, that's why capacitors exist. So when we talk about capacitance, really what you should have in, um, understand as the implication is the capacitance to store charges, like cap capacity to store charge. So, um, so you know, you see all these mathematical expressions that we went through. So we want to come up with some parameter capacitance that we are going to end up calling C. Um, that will be a measure of how well a given device can store charge. So let me tell you this. So one of those quantities that will be involved in defining capacitance of C, it's going to be amount of charges, right? We are talking about capacitor to store charge. So I am going to be interested in how much charge is stored there. Yeah? But there's going to be one more quantity involved. Because when you look at the setup of this parallel play capacitor, um, so what, what I'm calling capacitance, I want it to be property of the setup. Where are my capacitors around? Wait, did it ever get to the other tables? So when you have a capacitor, the capacitance is the property of this device. I want to say this has capacitance of, I don't know, 0 0.05 micro farad. That's the you know, capacitance. Um, I want to say this has a particular capacitance. So it's, um, one of the ways to describe the capacitance will be how much charges are there. But can you imagine taking the same capacitor and right now how much charge would you say is stored on this? Zero, right? I'm touching it all over, nothing's happening, it has zero charge. So what am I changing to change how much charges are actually stored here? What have you changed what have we changed in this setup to set some amount of charge here? Apply voltage. So amount of voltage that you apply here is going to be the one of the things that determine how much charge. So you have to kind of divide out, uh, or divide, okay, should I divide out voltage or multiply by voltage? Divide that up, right? Because the more ch voltage there is, the more charge you expect. So for capacitance, what you really want is amount of charge per voltage so that you can use that as property of this device. So that's the definition of capacitance. It's the amount of charge Q per amount of V. So voltage that you apply across the capacitor. So, so this is the definition. And once you have a sense of what the capacitors are for, then this is the intuitive definition. Like, there is no other way you would define it. So let me, let's wrap up the discussion of capacitance. We um, did a lot of the work needed here to actually calculate the capacitance of the parallel play capacitor. So let's take what we derived all here and then just to plug it into this definition of capacitance and see what we get. So according to the definition, this uh, is capacit. So this would be the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. So um, I guess in this setup, we started out by specifying how much voltage there is. So, or uh, we specify the voltage here. So let's say, all right, so we are going to divide by voltage. And for the amount of charge, we derived it here. That was question B. So let's just use this charge and see what we get. So when we plug in this expression here, epsilon naught area times V naught over D, 
you realize, I don't know if uh, I should say surprise or, I mean, we actually should have expected this to happen. If you are saying capacitance is the property of the device, then the voltage should not end up in the final expression. So in this derivation, you see voltage canceling out. So that capacitance is combination of these quantities. Epsilon naught times area over D. Does anything about the, these three parameters occurring in the capacitance of parallel plate, anything here surprise you? I'm sorry, I'm not surprised. Anything here, what, prop, what would you, if you had to pick out one, ask one, um, one category or sort of description of these parameters, what would you say? So, I mean, you know, epsilon naught, that's a physical constant, so let's forget about it. Area A and D, area and distance. What, what stands out about those two parameters? Chris? You get length quantity, and really what I want, to, want you to focus on is that these are geometric parameters. These are completely determined by, well, geometric properties of this capacitor. So, you know, so, you know, this is all rolled up, so it's hard for you to see, but imagine some amount of area, and as you are rolling it up, imagine some amount of distance between them. That's all you need to determine the capacitance. So, um, I want, to, I want you to have some idea of sense of scale for capacitance. So uh, I want to plug in some numbers. So here, um, so let me first start by giving you the unit of capacitance. Unit of capacitance is farad. So here in the definition of capacitance, what the left hand side should be is one farad, F-A-R-A-D. Um, I think he's some, I think it's named as the Faraday. Who did a lot of, I thought he did a lot of work with the magnetism. Whatever, it's named after a physicist. <laughs> so one farad, so that's, a, so you, in this equation, you can see how one farad relates to other, um, other uh, electrostatic quantities. One farad is equal to one coulomb per volt. Right? So, if you have a capacitor of one farad, then if you put one volt across the capacitor, you would say you would put on a charge of one coulomb. Yeah. Does anything about this statement surprise you? No, it doesn't. Okay. Let me pass around the, my one farad capacitor. I got this last year so that I can tell people that I have one farad capacitor. So let me pass this around so that you can at least tell people that you have seen a one farad capacitor. Please be careful with it. Don't touch the things. It's a, a very fragile. It can easily break if you apply too much of a voltage like static electricity. Uh, I haven't actually used this, so I don't know if they are broken yet. It just says one farad on the side. Um, but I, I want to tell you that one farad capacitors, they are unusual. They actually, they have been around only in the last 10 years or so. So I want to put in a more realistic numbers here to see what a typical capacitance looks like. So let's just guess, uh, this is a rolled up capacitor. Let's just guess how much area do you think could be rolled up here? Just come up with some reasonable number for area. Ten centimeters, uh, ten square centimeters. Square, yeah. uh, that seems a little bit too small. Let me say one. Um, let me say one square me uh, meter. So that would be like uh, ten thousand uh, square centimeters. So I'm imagining a strip of about um, strip of um, well one centimeter strip that can be rolled up around many many times. So if anything, this is on the high end. Good. Um, and what about for the uh, separation D? Like how small do you think a D w should be here? So something small, like smaller than millimeter, right? Let me go small as possible, say 0 0.1 millimeter. So for separation D, let me use the parameter of 10 to minus four meters, 0 0.1 millimeter. So let's plug in the numbers and see. Uh, I don't really want to. Uh, do I? Let's look up epsilon naught. I should do it. Uh, 
So let me look up epsilon naught here. Um, it should be somewhere in the textbook. So yeah, according to this, epsilon naught, the electric constant, is um, approximately 9 times 10 to the minus 12. And it's written in some weird units here. I'm just going to say it, uh, um, it's a farad per meter, um, because that's the, <laughs> what the unit has to be. <laughs> um, so let me plug in this and see what we get. So these are, um, I want you to remember these are sort of the largest number that I can think of, smallest number I can think of. And when you plug it in, this is what you get for the capacitance. With these numbers plugged in, capacitance or parallel play with these parameters would be, so this is about 10 to minus 11. 10 to minus 11 times the area, 1 divided by 10 to minus 4. So all the units work out to give me farad. It's only 10 to minus 7 farad. And that's actually more typical value of a capacitor. Uh, microfarad is about, uh, you would be able to find the microfarad capacitor all over the place if you have an electronics stockroom. Um, some, a lot of capacitances actually go a lot lower. Picofarad, 10 to minus 12 farads are also common. So, um, so, I, so that, that's the sense of scale for the capacitance that, want you to, that I want you to have. And this actually goes with what we said about Coulomb earlier. Do you remember what I said about Coulomb earlier? Like, how large is one Coulomb? Very large. It's an unreasonably large amount of charge. So one farad, like uh, this one farad here, it's an unreasonably large amount of um, uh, capacitance. So, you know, so this is a special purpose made one that's maybe useful for demos, but most the capacitors you will see on computer circuit boards and whatnot, they will, uh, it's, uh, they'll be like around the microfarads. Okay? So that's the uh, capacitance. Um, all right, any questions? So um, if I was in the formula memorizing mood, this is also one of the formulas I would memorize. But you should know how to drive it, really, uh, by being able to analyze this setup.